The Garden of Forking Paths The Garden of Forking Paths is a 1941 short story by Argentine writer and poet Jorge Luis Borges. It is the title story in the collection El Jardín de Senderos que se bifurcan, 1941, which was republished in its entirety in Ficciones, Fictions, in 1944. It was the first of Borges's works to be translated into English by Anthony Boucher when it appeared in Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine in August 1948. The story's theme has been said to foreshadow the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. Borges's vision of forking paths has been cited as an inspiration by numerous new media scholars. In particular within the field of hypertext fiction. Plot Summary the story takes the form of a signed statement by a Chinese professor of English named Dr. Yu Tsun, who is living in the United Kingdom during World War I. Tsun is a spy for Up Tai Lung 5, the military intelligence service of Imperial Germany. As the story begins, Dr. Tsun has realized that an MI5 agent called Captain Richard Madden is pursuing him, has entered the apartment of his handler. Victor Runeberg. And has either captured or killed him. Dr. Tsun is certain that his own arrest is next. He has just discovered the location of a new British artillery park and wishes to convey that knowledge to Berlin before he is captured. He at last hits upon a plan to achieve this. Dr. Tsun explains that his spying has never been for the sake of the Kaiser's Germany, which he considers a barbarous country. Rather, he says, he knows that Germany's intelligence chief, Lt. Col. Walter Nikolai, believes the Chinese people to be racially inferior. Dr. Tsun is, therefore, determined to be more intelligent than any white spy and to obtain the information Nikolai needs to save the lives of German soldiers. Dr. Tsun suspects that Captain Madden, an Irish Catholic in the employ of the British Empire, is similarly motivated. Taking his few possessions, Dr. Tsun boards a train to the village of Ashgrove, narrowly avoiding the pursuing Captain Madden at the railway station. He goes to the house of Dr. Stephen Albert, an eminent sinologist. As he walks up the road to Dr. Albert's house, Dr. Tsun reflects on his great ancestor, Tzui Pen. A learned and famous civil servant who renounced his post as governor of Yunnan province to undertake two tasks. Write a vast and intricate novel and construct an equally vast and intricate labyrinth in which all men would lose their way. Tzui Pen was murdered before he could complete his novel. However, and wrote contradictory jumble of irresolute drafts that made no sense to subsequent readers. And the labyrinth was never found. Dr. Tsun arrives at the house of Dr. Albert, who is deeply excited to meet a descendant of Tzui Pen. Dr. Albert reveals that he has himself been engaged in a long-time study and an English translation of Tzui Pen's novel. Albert explains excitedly that at one stroke he has solved both mysteries. The chaotic and jumbled nature of Tzui Pen's unfinished book and the mystery of his lost labyrinth. Dr. Albert's solution is that they are the same, and the novel is the labyrinth. Basing his work on the strange legend that Tzui Pen had intended to construct an infinite labyrinth and on a cryptic letter from Tzui Pen himself stating, I leave to several futures, not to all, my garden of forking paths. Dr. Albert realized that the garden of forking paths was the novel and that the forking takes place in time. Rather than space. In most fictions, a character chooses one alternative at each decision point and eliminates all of the others. In Tzui Pen's novel, however, all possible outcomes of an event occur simultaneously, all of which themselves lead to further proliferations of possibilities. Albert further explains that the constantly diverging paths sometimes converge again but as the result of a different chain of causes. For example, Dr. Albert says that in one possible timeline, Dr. Tsun has come to his house as an enemy but in another, he comes as a friend. Though trembling with gratitude at Dr. Albert's revelation and at his ancestor's genius, 
Dr. Tsun glances up the path to see Captain Madden rushing towards the door. Knowing that time is short, Dr. Tsun asks to see Tzui Pen's letter again. As Dr. Albert turns to retrieve it, Dr. Tsun draws a revolver and murders him in cold blood. Completing his manuscript as he awaits death by hanging, Dr. Tsun explains that he has been arrested, convicted of first degree murder, and sentenced to death. However, he has most abhorrently triumphed by revealing to Nikolai the location of the artillery park. Indeed, the park was bombed by the Imperial German Air Service during Tsun's trial. The location of the artillery park was in Albert, near the battlefield of the Somme. Dr. Tsun had known that the only way to convey the information to Berlin was to murder a person with the same name so that news of the murder would appear in British newspapers which connected with the name of his victim. End of the summary. Thank you.